Eviastar SP in Ulyanovsk has quietly moved from traditional jigs and stands production to an automated flow assembly line for the IL-76 MD-90A, also known as IL-476. This change is not just about using new tools. It aims to completely improve how the large transport aircraft is put together by replacing many manual tasks with coordinated robots, measurement systems, and centralized control. Public accounts, corporate press releases, and trade reporting provide a consistent overview of the installation and its rationale. However, procurement records or vendor case studies still contain numerous critical technical and contractual details. So, what is known about the installed line? The Aviastar flow line for the IL-76 family is structured as a sequence of robotic and mechanized stations as per multiple industry sources and the parties involved, rather than a single large stationary jig. Reports have described a new production line that consists of approximately 10 workstations. These workstations perform tasks such as docking fuselage sections, attaching wing consoles, installing empennage elements, and integrating engines and systems. The line is said to be equipped with laser tracking metrology to ensure that alignment tolerances are maintained during these joins. Its operational status was demonstrated by Aviastar's ability to roll the first IL-76 MD-90A off the flow line and deliver it to the customer. A systems integrator based in Moscow is identified as the principal designer and installer of at least the automated docking stand in the IL-76 assembly sequence in published materials. The company's role is confirmed by engineering, manufacturing, mounting, and commissioning work on the docking stands and first article assembly lines. The presence of the contractor and procurement traces from Aviastar's tender activity create a clear path from integrator to in-plant installation. Three concrete automation layers are consistently referenced in industry reporting. The first includes control and diagnostic systems such as PLCs, supervisory software, commissioning tools, and operator training. The second includes laser tracking metrology used for alignment and measurement. The third includes robotized stations for welding, fastening, and component handling. The ecosystem of line builders includes Russian robotics companies and other domestic station manufacturers. Reports emphasize the importance of domestic sourcing and import substitution, especially given recent supply chain disruptions. The question is, why should a flow line be used? Proponents point to measurable benefits, such as reduced cycle times, more predictable output, and less reliance on highly skilled manual personnel for repetitive operations. The action supports a broader industrial policy objective to standardize and centralize production, accelerate serial assembly, and make the process more data-driven. These motivations are explicitly stated in corporate and ministry communications. There are many aspects that remain opaque. Public sources often omit critical technical and commercial information. For example, Precise robot models, performance characteristics, and vendors are rarely disclosed. Sources refer to robotized stations and domestic manufacturers, but specific supplier connections remain assumptions unless confirmed in contract details. Also missing is a detailed explanation of the control architecture, including MES or digital twin integration and supervisory software. In addition, Contract economics such as penalty conditions, warranty terms, and milestone payments remain unavailable in open press. Let us understand how Kazan acquired its automated lines. Multiple reports identify Kazan's aviation industry as a regional leader and early adopter in deploying automated production cells and robotized welding stations. These reports describe regional industrial programs aimed at funding domestic robotics solutions. Kazan used a combination of local integrators and regional incentives to establish modular robot cells. This modernization process relied on step-by-step -step deployment rather than a single giant turnkey project. Aviastar benefits from Kazan's experience in two ways. First, 
Kazan offers a technical blueprint featuring modular automation and staged commissioning. Second, it demonstrates how regional funding and domestic suppliers can reduce dependence on imports. Public reporting cites Kazan as a model for Ulyanovsk modernization. A multi-year process is indicated. Early press items in the late 2010s reported the intention to implement a jigless flowline, installation of docking stands, and the first robotic stations took place from 2019 to 2021. By the end of 2021, the first aircraft assembled on the flow line was delivered. Reports from 2023 to 2025 focus on incremental additions and further procurement. The phased timeline aligns with best practices for introducing automation into large airframe assembly. Trade reporting mentions a growing Russian supplier base providing robot arms, welding cells, fixtures, and metrology. Domestic robot manufacturers supply specialized machines and turnkey cells to several heavy industry sectors. A systems integrator coordinates modules from domestic robot producers with metrology and control elements sourced from specialized suppliers. This appears to be the most accurate interpretation of publicly available evidence. Automating the assembly of large airframes is technologically challenging. Laser trackers must be integrated with in-process feedback. Maintenance and spare parts chains must be reliable. Robot cells must be precisely calibrated. Workers must be retrained to monitor and repair equipment. Public news rarely mentions commissioning delays or integration issues. These challenges are reflected in Kazan's incremental approach and in multi-year deployment periods. In conclusion, Aviastar's transition to automated lines for IL-76 assembly features installed docking platforms, a multi-station flow line, robotic cells, and laser metrology. A domestic systems integrator and Russian robotics firms are confirmed participants. Kazan's modular modernization served as a working reference. But critical details such as robot models, software architecture, and contract economics remain outside general press reporting. If you think the video was informative, please like, subscribe, and share. Please also take membership of the channel to encourage us.